guys, what's up? Stark here. Today I'm going to go over how to do fog. And I just want to start off by saying that After Effects has this fog 3D thing that they added in, but I, I prefer this way better just because you seem you have more control, essentially. Now, I thought it would be a lot better to actually show you the effect in a like finished scene. I just rendered out this one image from Houdini with uh, Redshift, and I just kind of laid it on thick with stylizing it so you could actually see the difference and then up here i just connected um a fog to the to the layer that's controlling it so i just want to show you what it looks like without it and the difference that it makes so here you go so zero 100 and this even though i'm dragging it down it's not really a good indicator of the fog because it's just connect to a different layer that is already set with all the settings and this has z depth ba basically it's finished but you can see the difference how it adds to your scene and the thing that's cool about it is it's really easy to add because all you need is a z depth layer so i'm going to show you how to do it and i'll explain how it works so magically i have this one set up as you can see here is the this is just the rendered image okay and then i have the z depth pass right here now I'm gonna show you pretty, like literally this is how it works. So you're just gonna to go to layer, new solid, and you don't have to use a solid, you could use video, you could add noise, which I would probably do if this was animated, but I just did one image for the tutorial. So you go in here and we're gonna do Luma inverted mat and essentially mess with the transparency, you have fog. And this is why I decided to show you the final because it, you know, this isn't, it's not a final comp, so it doesn't look all that, you know, great, or it doesn't give you a good indication of what's actually happening. So in the case of how this works, it's using the Z-Depth pass. And if you remember Z-Depth, anything, at least in this instance, unless you have it inverted, the closer something is to the camera, the, now this is 32, oh no, it's not 32 bit, but these are over one. Okay, so you have zero and one, but basically you would want to do zero to one. So brighter it is, closer to the camera, darker it is, farther away. That's the general way it works. Now, in the case of fog, the thing is, is it just so happens that because you're using the Luma Pass, okay, anything that is, let's just do this, anything that is bright white knocks out. So here, let me turn on the see it knocks it out if it's white and then if it's black it doesn't so that's essentially the way that it works but what we could do is with the z-depth pass we're essentially going to do what i'm assuming the plugins actually do which is we're messing with the the values of the this to sort of just push everything where it needs to be so what i'm going to do is just do a new viewer and this is what i you watch this is what I always do but especially with this one because it's kind of sensitive it's very sensitive we'll go into our z-depth okay and then there we are and you could just see that I use the uh, plugin the create pro exr layer comps which does this automatically it'll just basically make a new comp for each render pass and I I will say you could do this manually if you want to do anything close and do it, and I've, I've seen people do that, but I mean, I, I'm not, I would never do that because I don't have the patience. So all we'll do is we're going to add two things. We're just going to add an, hold on, let's see. Oh, let's just add an exposure, okay? So add an exposure and watch this guy, not this one. I should probably actually, sorry go into the z-depth there we go all right now watch here as they start just changing these values so if i up the exposure it's basically going to knock it all out okay because these are all white values now if i lower it essentially i'm shifting it so it's going to add still there's sort of a depth you could see here but there's more fog that's going to be in front but then we could start to kind of add like a curve in a way I'm like sort of like clamping it okay 
and then turning the exposure up. So you could get these things to where they're really knocking it out. All right. So we'll do this. And then I also like to add a brightness contrast. This is something that really, really, really adds to your comps because go outside, there's atmosphere. It's in all of our renders. I could have rendered the this out in Redshift with the uh, fog pass or turned on at least, but I like to do it this way because you have control. So let's just dial in a number. So let's do like negative, yeah. You know what, I'm just gonna negative 0.7 and then I can gamma correct this up. And let me actually zoom in because you can see that the information, because the, the bit depth is high, I have it in 16, but I'm not gonna change it because I already started. But you can start seeing this dark area. So it's not just white, like there's actually depth information. So you can see that these guys are closer. So we'll do something like this probably, and then I'll just turn up the brightness to maybe like seven, okay? Now, again, not done because, and this, and this is where it comes in where I'm saying I like to do it this way because you do have more control. If we go back, we'll just close out of this. If we go back, now we can just start turning it down to dial it in, all right? So something like, I don't know, like right there, I think is about what I did. But you could see just adding this, and I, I would obviously add um, Z depth, which let me just do it. Um, I would, this is, I'm gonna be using a plugin called Frisch Luft. So we'll just call this Z depth, fun. So effect, field, I'm just gonna plug these guys in. Uh, or Z depth, do like 15 to really do it. And I would, I know I have the tutorial on how to do it without, but I would, I if you're gonna get a Z depth plugin for After Effects, this is the one. So you can see here, and the reason I did it on top also is because the thing is we need the Z depth applied to this, because we need this to blur out as well, because it's it's gonna be using that. So that's why it's on top. But as you can see, so I'll turn this off. Even with the Z depth here, you can see the focus. And I mean, this is pretty blurry. I mean, for floating dodecahedrons, it's a good word. <laughs> but just adding the atmosphere, oh, sorry, really singles it out more. And you still have, you can still dial this in. You can still, here, let's just push this up because It's kind of cool, right? And uh, this is just a pet peeve of mine. Not a pet peeve, I just like the way it looks. So I'm turning this down to around it so we get these pentagonal, bokey, not bokeh, bokeh things, but there you go. And uh, with this plugin, as you can see, the edges are taken care of. So that's why I would say invest in this. But if, if you can't, I have the tutorial where I'll drop it in here, where it actually shows you how to do proper Z depth in After Effects. So uh, this is it. And I'll just go back to the final so you can see. Let me unlock my viewer. And that's basically what I did. I just focused it right here. And I, I did the same thing, which I think I said at the beginning, where I just used depth of field. So there you go. So let's see. I'll just do an on and off again. So adjustment to zero. So you can see it's kind of there, but it doesn't even 100. So that's with it up. And I'm pretty sure the values for my fog are about this. So it's about 40, I don't know, maybe, maybe in the range to like 20 to 40 or something like that. I don't know. So, all right, I hope this helps. Uh, you guys should really try it out. And it, as long as you have a Z depth pass, you're golden. Um, in Element, it, they have it built in, so you could do it in there. But this is how you do a fog pass. So that's all, guys. Thank you.